Are you a drummer who's looking to improve your hand speed? Or are you brand new to the drums and don't know where to start? Well, either way, we've got something for you. Plus, we've got Casey Cooper later on in the show, so stick around for this episode of Playing Drums. Episode of Plain Drums. My name's Dave, and today I'd like to talk about some issues that I've come across over the last few years, both as a drummer and as a teacher. So when you're moving around the drums, it just flows. I've often heard guys ask me, Dave, how do you get more fluidity around the drums? Maybe they can keep a pocket or a groove, but they're tense when they move from drum to drum or implement to implement. First, I'd like to address the grip. Let's make sure that we're holding the stick in a way that's gonna be relaxed and allow us to get around the drums in a fluid way. When we start gripping the stick, I want you to approach it like you're shaking someone's hand. The center part of your thumb should be down the center part of the stick, and your fingers should just wrap around nice and relaxed. This is a very relaxed grip, I'm not clenching the stick. Um, I should be able to pull the stick out of my hand if, with little effort if you tried. Next, I wanna make sure that your stick is rested on the third crease of your first finger, between there and your thumb. That is our pivot point. We're gonna call that the fulcrum. That's the first place from which your stick moves. The second is gonna be your wrist, and the third is going to be your forearm. Okay, once we've got that, like I said, we wrap our fingers around the stick and we're good to go. It's next important to look at the angle that our stick is traveling at. Uh, we wanna make sure that it's a straight up and down motion. Okay, why? Um, well, if you come down at an angle, your stick is gonna to want to naturally bounce back at the opposite angle. And when you do that, you have to pull the stick back. And you're actually using a lot of energy to pull the stick back every time you come down. If your stick motion is straight up and down, the stick naturally wants to bounce back, right? And it cuts your workload in half. You're actually using the rebound from your head, whatever your surface is, to push your stick back. So it's important to make sure that that stick motion is going up and down. One little check I do on myself to make sure that I'm going straight up and down is to keep a straight line from the tip of my stick all the way through the end of my elbow. Why? Well, when I'm using finger motion, I'm moving in this plane. When I'm using wrist motion, I'm moving in the same plane. And then when I add in my arm motion, it's still in the same plane. So by keeping that straight line, it's just ensuring that all my motions are in one vertical plane rather than having different compound motions all over the place. So once I've got my grip set, I've got my straight line and I'm playing straight up and down, then I'd like to talk about the full stroke. The full stroke is the first stroke every drummer should know. It's just a basic down up bounce stroke. A full stroke is taking the stick at a starting position, coming down and ending where you started. Nothing more, nothing less. Pretty simple. So let's take a quick exercise using full strokes on both hands. We're gonna start off with a bar of eighth notes on the right hand, bar of eighth notes on the left hand, two counts of eighth notes on the right, followed by two counts of sixteenths, and then continuing into the fourth bar, playing a full bar of sixteen notes. As we're going through that, make sure you're going through all the checkpoints. Make sure that you're holding the stick correctly with a relaxed grip. Make sure your stick is traveling straight up and down. And also make sure that you've got that straight line from the tip of your stick all the way through your elbow. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. So I don't know about you, but I like practicing the music. So let's play this along to one of my favorite practice tracks. Here we go.
just as a reminder, this track and tracks like these are available at plaindrums.com. 100% of the proceeds from track sales will be donated to charities that help hungry kids and hurting kids. So watch this video to see how you can make a difference. On any given night in the United States, there's 1.2 to 2.1 million homeless youth that are living on the streets. In California, there's over 500,000 youth that are living on the streets. Here at Youth Hope, we provide food for our youth and clothing. We also provide medical and education and jobs for our youth. When you buy practice tracks from PlainDrums.com, 100% of the profits are donated to Youth Hope and other organizations that support homeless kids and kids who have endured severe physical trauma. We look forward to your support because together we can make a difference. Welcome back, guys. Please help me welcome straight from Atlanta, Georgia, Casey Cooper, a.k.a. Cooper Drummer. Hello. Thanks for being on the show, man. Really no really problem. Thank you for having me. Oh, dude. You know, it was really great. I thought, hey, if you're going to start a YouTube drum show, who better to have than one of the most followed YouTube drummers out there? Hey, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk drums and uh, try and give some advice from all the times that I've been on YouTube and playing drums and having a good time. Awesome. So, you know, you are one of the more known guys. You know, I think... Last time I checked, you were at 1.1 million followers, subscribers hmm. on YouTube, right? How did how did you even get started with this whole YouTube thing? Well, I mean, I've just I've been a drummer since I was about six years old, and that's always what I've loved. It's always what I've wanted to do, and so I played in a bunch of different bands, and I love playing gigs and playing live shows. But I never felt like I was in a band that was going to take me to where I wanted to be as a professional musician. And in the Atlanta area, sometimes it's a little bit harder to find that kind of thing. And so for me, I had people telling me at shows like, hey, you know, I really love watching you play. And so YouTube is a visual medium. It is a opportunity for people to watch. And so I thought, hey, why don't I try putting up some YouTube videos and see if people feel the same way about my playing online as they have at these gigs. Right. And I love doing it too. That's right. really the, the biggest thing was I was like, I really enjoy making videos right so so i mean clearly people have enjoyed uh your playing online i had yes, somebody so. send me a video of you playing with fire is that is that something you do is that is that just your thursday practice mm -hmm. regimen just playing with fire wake up at eight and uh, set the sticks on fire no um that's i mean that is kind of an example of something that i love to tell people is that you have to do things differently you have to be uh, you can't just do what everyone else does because if someone's already done it, you're not necessarily going to find something interesting to catch people's attention. And so for me, like it's just another way to, to have fun playing drums and incorporate my love for fire and be creative, you know? So, you know, what are some of the things you've learned? You've, you've been doing this for a few years now. You've gained quite the following endorsements. What are some of the things you've learned along the way? The biggest thing that I've learned along the way is that your attitude is almost as important as your ability to play, if not more important. Because, I mean, many of you who have seen my videos, and I'm, you've seen my videos, like, I'm not the best drummer that has ever landed on planet Earth. I don't think that. People who watch the videos obviously know that. And so, um, it's like, to be able to be a professional musician, to be able to fill gigs, to be able to make money doing what you love, you have to be the best you can be but it's not just that. It's not just about practicing and your, your technique. It's also about how you approach people, how you approach your relationships with bandmates, how you approach, like, if you know you're good and you tell everyone you're really good and then you walk into a gig and you act like you're a hot shot, just because you're good doesn't mean you're gonna get the call back. Right. And so, I, I mean, practice to be the absolute best you can ever be, but also understand that just a level of humility and a level of understanding is also very important. All right, Casey, so tell me, are there any new projects or anything you're working on right now? Well, I just passed a million subscribers and I came up with a kind of theme for my channel going forward. It's always been about helping other people and um, inspiring other people to play drums and have fun doing that. And so I came up with this theme of a million drummers and um, it's a little bit of a lofty thing, but basically my goal is over the next however many years to just inspire a million drummers. And so whether that's through videos, whether that's through interviews like these, whether that's through um, in-person lessons or that's from clinics, whatever it is, I'm doing everything I can to just be a positive impact on the drumming community because it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about what we can do for each other. And if people come together on that, it's so powerful. I agree. I love it. 
So the way we like to end, or end these interviews is mm -hmm. by uh, giving you five questions. We'll call it our fast five. So okay. don't think too much about it. Just the first answer that pops in your head. I want to hear it. All right. Cool. So let's start off. Uh, who's a new drummer that we should be on the lookout for? Okay, Nathan Followhill. I, I really okay. love Nathan Followhill. I always talk about him when people ask. Awesome. So if you could add one thing to your playing, what would it be? I really wish that I could play open-handed a lot better than I can. I think that that is really just a skill that not only lends itself to being able to move around the kit in new ways, but also lends itself to some really cool like visual aspects of your playing. And as I've said before, I'm, I'm really about the visual aspect of it. Not only play well, but play in a way that entertains people and makes people happy. All right, what's your favorite city that you've been to? Ooh, well, Arlington, Texas is not only where I've been to, but it's where I was born. And that's my favorite city because um, I grew up there. It's home of the Dallas Cowboys, home of the Texas Rangers, my two favorite sports teams, and home of the original Six Flags. And it doesn't get much better than that. Very cool, very cool. What is the best thing that you've eaten in the last month? Oh man, it's it's awesome you asked that today because last night my wife cooked me this like asparagus and chicken and sun-dried tomatoes and cherry tomatoes and I, I literally did every bite I was just like wow I didn't know that you were like a professional chef like I did not realize that until last night so amazing it was amazing it's nice to be married to a professional chef. yeah exactly uh, and last one is there a quote or a verse that inspires you okay um, I kind of it's just a, an overall theme um, but find something that you love and then do that and, and what that means is like, if you love what you do, whether or not you make a ton of money doing it, money is just a bonus, you know? If you're rich and you do what you love, cool. But if you're just getting by and you do what you love, that's okay too. Because going to work and, and hating what you do just because it makes you a lot of money is never going to give you happiness. It's never gonna find fulfillment. So for me, I always said, whether I am making a million dollars a year or whether I'm making just enough to get by, I want to be doing what I love, and that's music. Awesome. Casey, thank you so much. Really, really loved having you here. Thank you. Really David. appreciate your time. And guys, we just want to direct you to plaindrums.com. Just as a reminder, 100% of track sales will go to charities that help hungry and homeless kids. This is David Natal reminding you that amazing doesn't come from your hands. Amazing comes from your heart. We'll see you next time on Plain Drums.